Good afternoon and welcome to the Cohen Group Northwest studio. Today is Wednesday and that means it's time for this week's market update. Today we're going to have a discussion around a trending topic in the real estate world and since it's housing, it affects every single one of us. Words like bubbles and bursting and the market has to change at some point, right? And I'm going to wait for the market to shift before I do anything with housing. And as a real estate professional, and especially as a housing market data nerd, I've had a lot of these conversations recently. And my team had an in-depth discussion on this topic at our team meeting this Monday. So some of the pieces that I'll be chatting about with you today come from John and Layla and Max and Leo and Chris. So shout out to each one of them for contributing to what I hope will be a fruitful discussion around some factors of supply and demand as regards the housing market right here in Whatcom County and specifically in Bellingham. So We can all agree that the 2006, 2007, 2008 bubble and subsequent burst of that time uh, was based on faulty core issues with subprime residential lending, predatory lending and mortgage practices, and some shady Wall Street shenanigans. In the real estate heyday of 2006 and 2007, median single-family residential prices in Bellingham peaked around $315,000. Honestly, that sounds like a great price right now. Then the crash happened, and uh, John Anger, who's been on our team for a few months now and who's been in the real estate world for about 18 years, um, can speak to foreclosures and short sales and what it looked like for a lot of distressed underwater sellers of that time, especially sellers who had adjustable rate mortgages, balloon payments, and other factors involving their house um, that then went back to those predatory lending practices of the time that have since changed in the subsequent years. Even with that drastic of a housing market bubble and burst, it still took about four years for Bellingham's market to go from that peak of $315,000 in 2006-ish to January 2012, um, the the trough of the market for single family residential was 235,000. Again, this is just averages across Whatcom County. This isn't any specific niche market, which could have had a more or less drastic change. That's a drop of about 34% over the course of four years. That drop recovered by May 2015 in just over three years and has trended upwards since then. Now, the market of the last 10 years, as far as prices go, it's nearly tripled from that $235,000 median sales price at the at the trough of the market, at the bottom of the market, to what we saw in the first quarter of 2022, $660,000 as our median price point. Now, Along with price changes like that, especially since income has not risen at nearly a commensurate rate to go along with it, um, it makes sense that that causes a lot of stress. Um, It makes housing less and less affordable, um, and it pushes us into the housing market squeeze that we've seen specifically in the last two years that is continuing into 2022. And so to answer this question here at the bottom of the screen, At some point, the market will change. The economy will change. A shift of some sort in our larger national or regional economy is bound to happen at some point, which will affect the real estate world as we see it right now. My main point for this discussion is that we've been pushed into such an intense market squeeze that it is highly unlikely for a shift to happen very rapidly as far as to the point of moving us into anywhere near what we might consider a balanced market or to a drastic decrease from the prices that we're seeing today. Um, I don't think that there will be a bubble burst, at least in what we see as the core single family residential market in areas like Bellingham, Linden, and Ferndale proper. Um, I believe that there will be a natural cap at some unknown point where enough buyers will refuse to pay more and more for a home, enough buyers that it makes an actual difference in the market. 
This cap will be reached once we have critical mass of an unknown combination of factors, of human factors, circumstantial factors, work from home flexibility factors, as well as circumstantial, economic, and political factors in our society as a whole. At the end of the day, this comes down to supply and demand. As demand increases and supply remains the same, prices rise. As supply increases to meet demand prices level or slow, and when supply exceeds demand to a significant enough point that we release the, the surge of buyers who've been priced out of the market, prices may drop at some point. Now, ways that supply can increase. Additional supply in our market would have to overcome several barriers before we can see an increase, a significant increase in supply. There's a seasonal increase that happens every single year. Inventory rises in the summer and decreases in the winter. I'm talking about larger trends beyond that cyclical cycle of each year. New construction has plenty of current barriers right now. And shout out to John Anger for pulling a resource for me on this one. Um, that source listed labor issues, lack of vacant lots for sale, lending restrictions on investment properties and vacant land, increased cost of lumber and building materials, supply chain issues, and laws like zoning regulations that every developer and builder has to work around in any specific community. How about generational shifts? So while, and what that would mean is a larger population reaching the point where they are downsizing or their estates are now selling their homes on the market. While the boomer generation is in and heading towards retirement age, they're not the largest generation nationally anymore. Millennials lead the count by a couple of million people. Boomers are the second largest generation. But Gen Z is now at the upper end. They're age 25 years old. They're age 10 to 25 meaning that there is a large core of adults and soon-to-be adults ent entering into the workforce as well as the potential housing buyer pool. They're the third largest generation, and they're growing up right behind us younger millennials. Um, Whatcom County's population um, in the senior age bracket, according to the 2020 U.S. Census, has us at uh, a couple of percentage points higher than what the U.S percentage of senior citizens is as a whole, um, but not a huge significant amount to the point where we would see a drastic shift because of an aging demographic popula uh, aging population. That's not to say that there won't be some sort of shift due to that, but that won't be the big contributing factor to a bunch of new inventory becoming available in our specific area on a whole as a whole. Um, how about people moving away? Depending who you hear from, there's a lot of people moving into Whatcom County and a lot of people leaving Whatcom County. I don't have data on the specific in and out ratio of our county, and I don't want to rely on anecdotal data alone. What I can say is that total new listings in Bellingham were down 9% since 2015 and down 22% since 20. 18. So new listing inventory is still down compared to years past. And that is one of our most of the moment ways of tracking what inventory looks like, because that is the actual inventory measurement. Now, we have to zoom out, too, because some of these factors, of course, are national and regional as well as specific to our area. But we do have to recognize that historically and nationally, the United States is in a housing supply. I would even call it a crisis. Um, Fannie, or excuse me, Freddie Mac estimated the national housing shortage at 2.5 million units in 2018, and they estimated that by the fourth quarter of 2020, the deficit had risen to 3.8 million units. Um, Seattle, as a metropolitan area on some of the maps that I was able to see, Seattle is on the shortage side of different spec of the spectrum of housing availability versus some other municipalities, large me metropolitan areas where there actually is sufficient housing. It's no surprise that the Seattle area would have a shortage. And then looking here locally, according to the City of Bellingham Housing FAQ page, we need about 600 new housing permits per year to keep up with demand. Now, I remember looking at this data a year ago, so I don't remember if this has changed. The housing page has not been updated since then, to my knowledge. But over the last 10 years, according to that resource, Bellingham has issued permits for an average of 430 housing units per year. 
that's a deficit of 170 per units per year every year for 10 years. And only about a third of those housing permits issued have been for single family residential homes. The rest of them are for multifamily units. While multifamily construction is important for housing more families in a given geographical space, it offers little to no benefit aside from temporary living situations for people who are seeking to build equity in their own home, to have home ownership and to take advantage of the appreciation that we do see in this market. So to pull this all together, we have to look at the, fa the facts of supply and demand if we're projecting a future for the housing market here in Whatcom County. If supply is unlikely to grow at a commensurate rate to the population growth and demands of our world, we are unlikely to see prices dropping. So if supply stays roughly steady, for the market to shift, we would need to see a significant change on the demand side of the spectrum, a change in buyer behavior. Now, what that could potentially look like is if we have seen a huge surge of work from home, specifically tech workers, into our area of people looking for a higher quality life and generally lower cost of living while maintaining their higher out of area incomes, if those companies reverse those work from home policies to a statistically significant point, we might see a small migration away from our area as people make those decisions for their own personal lives. Is that big enough to shift the market? It might be one factor. Um, if interest rates continue to be on the rise, as they have been drastically, and as I have experienced firsthand and very deeply over the last six weeks, that is pr that could be pricing a significant enough pe a number of people out of especially the first time home buyer bracket in the market that it may cool down some of the activity on the existing listings. Is that the solution that we want for first time housing buyers to be further priced out of the market and unable to compete? That potentially is one of the pathways towards some sort of leveling off of the price appreciation that we're seeing in our community. There are a lot of different perspectives and opinions on what could be done to change what is happening here in our world. And this show is not meant to be one that is at the forefront of how do we solve this situation. This is a data presentation week after week of what is happening right here in Whatcom County and right here in Bellingham. And so what I would leave you with, this is the data that I'm able to provide. This is within the scope of what I'm able to access and I don't have the answers. Um, I would just suggest that whenever you're in these conversations around, we're in a housing bubble, the market's going to crash. This can't, this isn't sustainable. It can't go any longer. Just consider how much of that conversation is a stress response to the realities of our current situation and also what would have to change for the market to also change as well. What are the sources that we're looking to for what is currently happening in the national housing market, the regional housing market, and the local housing market? What actions should be taken um, by the decision makers who do comprehensive plans and land buildability studies and uh, work with zoning and work on the infill toolkit and all of these resources that we, these policies that are put in place that either allow for more development or dissuade development. It's a complex situation, and I don't think that there's any one right answer. I think there's a lot of nuance, there's a lot of complexity, and there's a lot of need for deep practical conversations, which are happening as to what our city and our community can do moving forward. Um, so my takeaway message for those who have listened this far is to reach out for reputable sources, whether they're national economists. There are several really large real estate brokerage economists um, from Windermere, from Compass, from the National Association of Realtors, who are great sources, along with the Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae official economists, as well as local experts in our area who are working specifically on these different planning commissions and boards, getting their take and their perspective because they're the literal boots on the ground of the situation. And I have now droned on for long enough. So friends, that was this week's market update.
and I hope I will see you next time.